Hey, it's me, Tommy. In this video, we are gonna take a look at the Aperture Spotlight Mount, the world's first Bowens Mount Ellipsodial Reflector Stage Light, or Spotlight. So if you already have a bunch of Bowens Mount lights and accessories, you can use this with those lights. But I would like to caution you, if you're going to use it with another type of light, make sure that the LED that you're gonna use is round and it is not of the bicolor variants. Because when you use a bicolor light, you can see some kind of striping because the way they achieve these uh, bicolor COB lights is they have this striping that switches between the colors and you can kind of see that when you put it through a lensed reflector like this. And so if you're going to be using this with other lights, you need to make sure that it's all one solid color like Aperture's lights are and that it's round because otherwise you'll get some weird artifacts. I'm using this mount with the 120D Mark II. Now a question I like to answer in my channel is how does an accessory like this impact the color quality and the intensity of the light? So I have the UPR Tech CV600 here and we're gonna do some measurements of all of Aperture's current lineup of COB lights. The 120T, the 120D, the 300D, and the 120D Mark II. All of my measurements were taken with the UPR Tech CV600 at one meter away, compared against the standard reflector included with all of Aperture's COB lights. Starting with the 120D Mark I, using the reflector we're getting about 250 lux minimum and 5000 lux maximum, with a color temperature of around 5800 Kelvin. The spotlight mount drops the color temperature by about 300 Kelvin on the 120D and it increases the intensity by about 4.5 times the reflector at every power level. So at 10% power we're getting 1160 lux and at 100% we're hitting almost 24000 lux. Moving over to the 120T, Aperture's first COB Bowens mount light, the color temperature is now only affected by a marginal amount, maybe 50 points at most. And the output with the reflector goes from 50 lux to 3800 lux, while using the spotlight mount, it goes from 200 lux up to almost 15,000 lux. Moving on to the 120D Mark II, Aperture's newest available light, we can see the color temperature of daylight lights is still affected by between 200 and 300 points towards tungsten, which is totally within the spec that they are advertising on the site. We also still see the output is being multiplied by about 4.5 from 9 lux at 1% with the standard reflector up to 42 lux with the spotlight mount, all the way up to 7000 lux with the standard reflector and 33,500 lux with the spotlight mount. And finally the 300D. Vanilla with the reflector you will get between 900 lux and 10,000 lux and with the spotlight mount you move up to 4,000 lux to almost 50,000 lux. So we can see it improves the light intensity by about four and a half times when compared with the standard reflector and it also doesn't change the color quality enough to really matter. The build quality is very solid. It's all aluminum die cast and glass. It's a heavy tool and that's why it comes with its own dual junior baby pin mount. So you can mount it onto a C-stand and then you will mount your Bowens mount light behind it. We've also got four leafs on it for cutting the light in any variation of different shapes that you want. Top, bottom, left, and right. It has an optional iris accessory and you can focus it. You have to buy the different lenses separately. It only comes with one and it comes with a few gobos that I think are really interesting. Gobos are where a tool like this really shine. This one comes with like a foliage kind, uh, blinds and a tree type gobo, which basically give this light different effects that you can use in your filmmaking or on a stage. Loading a gobo is pretty simple. You just slide out the little holder, slot it in, and drop it back in there. And then we focus it. So I've got the blinds effect going on back there and I think this is one of the most interesting features of a light like this. For example, your night for day scenes could get a whole lot more interesting. God damn son. You can also order custom gobos, not through Aperture, but uh, you can order them and cut your own custom logo into them, for example. Or you can use the leaves to make interesting shapes like triangles for your backgrounds. And the leaves are different from barn doors and the fact that you can move them and make specific interesting shapes. And also because barn doors don't actually work with a system like this. Because the light is actually focused on the wall, if you put anything in front of it right where the light comes out, it just dims it. I think a good practical demonstration here is to take the iris out. This is what the optional iris looks like. It has to go before all the lens elements because if you put it in front of it, interestingly, instead of cutting it into a little circle, 
it'll just dim the light. Isn't that interesting? What I've got here is the 26 degree lens. If you wanted to liven things up with some different colors, we've got a gel holder in the front here. And we've got a knob here that will tighten down the focusing mechanism. Make sure you tighten it down super tight because I had it a little bit loose and then I pointed my light down. And then it uh, came crashing down pretty hard. So just make sure you tighten it all the way because that glass is really heavy. Lucky for me though, the build quality is superb and when the when I pointed it down and the glass element came crashing forward, nothing happened, it's fine. I just tightened it up and we're good to go. So that is the Aperture Spotlight Mount, the world's first of its kind. I'll have links to go pick one up yourself if you want one in the description of this video. If you use those links, it will help support my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.